Hey Rebels, my name is Matthew Barton. I'm the host of the Rebellion Brewing Podcast. Even though it's the off-season, we know the most hardcore golfers never stop thinking about the game. Even pilots with the Snowbirds have been known to stash some clubs under the seats before they go flying. One of the things Rebellion has worked really hard to do is ensure Rebels can get craft beer whenever they hit the links. When the season's on, you can find our beer in cans or in tap at places like the Royal Regina Golf Course, Wiscana Country Club, Deer Valley, and Regina Beach Golf Course. Today's guests are Matt and Brock, and they're two of three hosts from Drive the Green Podcast. They're Saskatchewan guys, and they're telling stories all about Saskatchewan golf. So let's get into it. Brock, Matt, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> oh, it's great. We're happy to be here. You did a great job with that intro, by the way. <laughs> thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> a little bit of spice and art to bring the audience into what you guys are all about. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> so in a nutshell, tell my audience what your podcast is all about. All right. So the boys, uh, so the three of us, we essentially, we're from Moose Jaw. Uh, we started Drive the Green, I don't know, we're 94 episodes ago, so... We were just three guys that golfed every week together, and next thing you know, we, we, we said, you know, we're, we're, we've been doing this thing, golfing together all the time. We, we talk about golf all the time. Let's, let's put a pod tech, podcast together and see what can happen. So that's, we essentially started that way, and now from, from that point on, we've, we've had multiple PGA guys on the show. Uh, you know, we've had a chance to travel the province and, and golf some pretty great courses as the golfers that listen to this show uh, – might know there's a ton of good golf courses in Saskatchewan so that's what we're trying to do is showcase some of those and and just chat about the game at the same time what's the main thing people can get from your show are they are they looking to be entertained or to learn some tips and tricks yeah I would say uh, entertainment's probably the the main goal of our show uh, we talk a little bit about obviously golf in Saskatchewan but it's more focused on the PGA Tour and uh, you know Canadians in general Canadian golf podcast so we kind of recap the the week that was in the PGA. We talk a little bit about our weeks and and maybe some of the things that happened around our games. And really, it's just uh, you know we're just having fun chatting about the game. So if if you're a casual fan or a or a committed fan, uh, I think you'll get a lot out of it. Are you guys? Uh, have you ever gotten things like holes in ones, or are you talking more like, oh, my putting game has gotten better. I've shaved a few strokes off my my game. Uh, well, Matt, Matt here has got a hole in one and me and the other guy don't have one. So we hear about that pretty much every week on the pod. But uh, other than that, yeah, we're getting a little better as we play. We try to play as much as we can. But yeah, they, I would say you probably uh, you hear about the ace that I have every episode. Uh, so I hang that over these guys head pretty good. And then really, it's a lot of uh, sparring uh, about our games. We, we, we go out once a week for sure together, if not more. And so you'll hear about, uh, you know, who's playing the best at this time. But more it's so usually me, by the way. <laughs> do you guys, uh, is it friendly competition or do you guys get pretty cutthroat? Uh, it's a pretty friendly competition. We usually try to play a different kind of gambling side game every, every time we go out. So we talk a little bit about that. But again, as much as we talk about that, we do talk about the actual PGA Tour as well. And, and <laughs> a little bit of golf in Saskatchewan. Uh, like I say, there's, there's a lot of good courses. So we try, to, we try to get to as many of those as we can too. So what's what's the big hot burning issue? I mean, we're off season, so how do you how do you keep keep people excited about golf when it's winter? Yeah, I mean, if you don't have a an indoor facility where you live, it's pretty tough to stay in it. I mean, you got to you're pretty much uh, reduced to a net in your garage or something like that. So right now, it's I mean, it's kind of the off season, but there are some tournaments that are going on. Christmas, obviously, they don't have a whole lot going on in December, but. Uh, this actually, this upcoming week, the PGA Tour starts again. So they're in Hawaii, and, and we're back in it for the next pretty much nine months. So, and What excites you about Hawaii? Is, is uh, Canadians competing? Or are they going to be doing okay? Yeah, so uh, Tournament of Champions is this weekend, so it's essentially all the guys that won tournaments over this past year. And so uh, Canadian Corey Connors won a tournament this past year, so he's, he's going to be playing in it. And then, uh, yeah, there's a couple more. Hawaii tournaments with Canadians. We have, I think, seven on the tour this year. Is that good? So, I, I have no great. context. Yeah, yeah, no. So to give you some context, uh, pretty much over the course of the last, I don't know, five five to eight years, it's kind of fluctuated between 
three, four. But over the last couple of years, it's, we've got up to, you know, six, seven, eight that are in almost every tournament. So Canadian golf as a whole is starting to grow. Obviously, uh, the casual fans might also know Brooke Henderson from the, the female side of things, uh, number four in the world. So she's taken over, and, and a lot of people are now starting to. Obviously, uh, Wascana hosted the CP Women's Open last year. So big things for Canadian golf, and especially here with the, the local roots. So, uh, yeah, and Graham Dillette's back too. So Weyburn boy uh, with some Saskatchewan ties, obviously, and he's back this year, so it'll be nice to watch him a little bit too. That was going to be my next question, the um, Saskatchewan connection to golf. My wife worked in tourism for uh, last like last year she was working in tourism and she basically said the PGA thing is massive it showcases our province to the world it proves that we can roll with some of the biggest cities and shows that players can actually enjoy themselves and compete and we're not a we're not uh, small chips yeah I think uh, that's the kind of the key factors in in golf being a sport kind of for everyone is that Sure, the watching the PGA Tour, these guys are the best of the best, and and you know they can pull off shots that you know maybe we can't. But at the same time, there's great golf courses all over the world, and especially here in Saskatchewan. So um, that's kind of why we love the game is we can we can play courses that you know are those diamonds in the rough, and you can essentially you can have those anywhere. And so it's nice to get down to you know somewhere from Willow Bunch all the way up to to Nipwin. There's great courses all over the province, no matter where you live. And uh, it's just important to keep in mind that when you're watching the PGA Tour that these guys are the pros and you can just go out and you can be terrible at golf, you can be great at golf, but you're having a good time, especially with brew. So, <laughs> Especially with a beer? Exactly. Uh, what do you guys usually look for in a beer when you're hitting the links? Uh, generally, I'm looking for a little bit of a lighter beer, but um, maybe afterwards I'm looking darker, but a little bit lighter on the course just to kind of keep me hydrated a little bit more but <laughs> that's what i say to myself anyways but the beer i picked today is rebellion's cerveza which we kind of designed to be that summer drinking for the beach for the golf course you're working out you want to get refreshed but you don't want to get trashed so that's what this is so cheers 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 i would say uh after the first few uh tastes here i mean i've i've dabbled in this beer plenty before but uh i would i would say that's exactly what you hit the mark with what you're trying to do uh it's something that like uh like brock said it's not going to bog you down after you know six to twelve of these things on the on the course uh just give you an idea of where we're at with our uh beer drinking on the course um yeah it's it's a great you can tell it's like got that summer feel to it so um hits the spot for me anyway what do you get when you you taste it for the first time are you, are you picking up anything specific I'm getting crisp and smooth. That's my two adjectives I'm going to use. Yeah. I got a little little hints of fruit maybe. I'm not I'm yep. feeling a little bit of that. Yep. We do have lime in this beer. Uh, no syrups. It's powdered lime. They like take the the skin and they powder it and we throw it right in the batch. Some guys will take uh, like sugar syrup adjunct. We don't do that. Uh, so you are getting lime. That's what you're picking up. Maybe that tropical. You might be able to pick out a little bit of a corn flavor. It's a traditional Mexican style beer, so we, we did have to put in corn because that's what, that's what the style calls for. And I think when you, you taste it, it adds a little sweet, corny kind of character to it. I'm not yeah. sure if you're picking that I, up. I can, I can feel a little bit of that, yep. yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, when, when we're tying this into, like you had mentioned before, you're on uh, some golf courses, and obviously the, the goal is to be on every golf course, of course. Uh, oh, wow couple courses there Uh, (laughs) i think uh this is one that uh you know maybe if your course doesn't have it maybe just maybe toss a few in your bag i think we've all done that before i mean if if there's a beer that you like or a drink you like and they don't necessarily sell out your course uh hopefully no golf course are listening to this but they all know what happens anyway so uh just toss a couple in your bag and and then maybe leave the cans in the trash so that they can see that oh people are drinking this maybe we should bring it to the course and sell them rather than have people walking on with them so that's what made the difference for us when we were trying to get in the golf courses. Because when we first started, they were like, "Wow, what the hell is craft beer? And why should we take you guys seriously? You know, we, we have a particular clientele. And we kept saying, we're a premium product. We're a kick-ass Absolutely. beer. Come on, bring us on. Just give us a shot. 
but it was actually the fans. It was golfers walking in and saying, why isn't my beer on tap? Or why can't I get my beer when I'm paying to golf? And they were the ones who made the difference. It wasn't us. It was it was golfers. Yeah, I think uh, you're starting to see that a little bit more and more. Um, the uh, the pro shops or the uh, the concessions at these golf courses realize that uh, there's not just the the kind of the the blanket brands that you might have seen in the past, and to start to bring some more uh, selection to the course. So uh, you've, you have noticed that a little bit more, and hopefully you can get to that point where you know it becomes almost that full service style where you can get 15 to 20 different kinds of, of beer before you go out. Cause that's the thing you want it. A lot of people are just there f- to casually golf and do something they love. Why not have the beer that you love too while you're doing it? And who doesn't like supporting local, right? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it guys. <laughs> so I'm going to change tack a little bit. How, serious on a scale of one to ten are you about golf are you would you say you're casual or you're trying to go pro uh i would say like mentally serious 10 uh skill serious uh it's gonna take some work so that like we're not we're not pro by any means we are uh we are i would say we're all around that six six to eight handicaps so for golf uh golf folks non-golf folks that's essentially on average what you would expect to shoot over par so classic humble saskatchewan boy yeah yeah so i wouldn't say just because we have a show doesn't mean we're the best golfers in the world but i think that's what makes it the best part about what we do is when we talk about our games we have some bad shots we have some great shots and and that's golf and so (laughs) we uh we also do uh you know we do some course reviews some video stuff uh so anyone that's watched our videos or maybe will go and, and find us after this can attest to uh the uh, third member of our group who's not uh, sitting beside us but not on the show uh, he has an affinity for hitting windshields uh, of vehicles parked in parking lots (laughs) on purpose Uh, uh, it wasn't on purpose but it happened um so yeah there's uh, we had a chance to showcase some of he's looking at you like hey man (laughs) don't 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 tell him (laughs) bring it up all the time uh yeah he shouldn't have been parked there he says (laughs) but yeah so i mean we we have some good good holes bad holes and the best part is you get a new round next time you go out, so it doesn't really matter what happens. What do you think about the guys from Jackass uh, tearing apart courses and crashing golf courts? Is that is that sacrilegious for you? Do they risk wrecking the green or cra- destroying basically expensive equipment? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a tough question. I mean, from the damage done to the golf course perspective, I uh, frown. I don't like it that much, but at the same time, I find it hilarious hilarious as hell so i mean i loved that was one of my favorite uh jackass scenes is when they're going over the bunker and then there's that uh what is that inflatable or that doll on the other side and it spins it and they go slamming down hard and uh yeah here there's another jackass coming out so it's gonna be interesting to see what they do uh especially now that they're like mid 40s <laughs> so uh, i mean there's gonna be some there's gonna be some injuries there the steel wheelchair jackass to her <laughs> yeah exactly so i mean from a golf course perspective i'm sure they they told the course what was going to happen after and that's all on the course but at the same time if if i see you know on social media or something like that someone who's taken a four by four to a green or something like that as far as vandalism to golf courses i hate seeing that but but overall it was hilarious. There's one goofy thing I keep seeing that I wanted to ask you guys about. I see these guys, and they're on the green, and they, they won't put their knees down, or they can't put their knees down or something. So they're, like, doing, like, a half push-up. Oh, yeah, the Camille Vijegas, uh getting right down. Yeah, so you're not supposed to – I don't know if it's a, an actual rule or an unwritten rule, but, yeah, it's feet only. You're not supposed to lay down on greens or kneel on greens. So, yeah, they try to get as low as they can to read a putt. Uh, but, yeah, guys can look pretty goofy on, on the greens for sure. I, I, if you see that, if you see that on a non, in a non-professional setting, you have full – full right to call that guy out for being a complete idiot so <laughs> so if you do that don't please stop because you're like hey there's there's no money on the line just just yeah, chances are you're missing it anyway <laughs> so is that ain't gonna help you <laughs> so yeah it's i mean you can to each their own but at the same time you there are some things that you can you can call people out for yeah 
what courses would you recommend in Saskatchewan for people to check out next summer? Ooh, that's tough. Uh, I guess if you're in the Regina area, I would say uh, we have a soft spot in our heart for Katepwa. Katepwa Beach, just a nine-hole course. you got a couple hours, just head out there. Uh, obviously, uh, I guess Waska Sioux is a, a great course that I'd probably say. Deer Valley around Regina here. Uh, there's some, if you got time to go to Willow Bunch, south of uh, the southern, south central, it's a great course. Uh, if you're up in the northeast, check out uh, Green Water and Nipawin. They're both kind of hidden gem courses that are quite nice. And then when you're in Nipawin, you could also check out the Dam Smokehouse, which has like amazing barbecue. Like Farron is not screwing around. And he carries oh, yeah? rebellion on tap. <laughs> But great his, plug. <laughs> his food's amazing. Yeah. Like he hosted us and it was great. Uh, he knew we were coming up just to have supper. And he sent out an email saying, hey, the guys from Rebellion are coming. So come on out if you want to meet them. And we walked in the front door and people were like, hey, it's the Rebellion guys. We're like, what? What do, what do you mean? Like a big night plan and you're the <laughs> celebs you didn't even know? Yeah, it was. <laughs> he made Mark, uh, one of the owners, he made him get up and give a little speech. Mark's like, well, oh, sh- shucks. Thanks for coming out, guys. <laughs> Yeah, like, but that's that's the best uh, thing, you know. Just that goes back to that supporting locally. Those a lot of small town courses, they put the most care into their golf course that you wouldn't believe, and and people just on that local level just they just like seeing new people, and and it's all about a friendly atmosphere, and yeah, that's why we love the game. You can go in and be talking with, uh, you know, go into the clubhouse and talk with a, you know, an 80 year old guy who's, who's got stories to no end or a young guy that's just starting. And it's just, it's the greatest game. Anyone can play it. Everybody's got uh, big fish stories when it comes to fishing. You know, the, the fish gets bigger with every retelling. Exactly. Do you guys have a big golf story that keeps changing with every retelling? Uh, I would say uh, for, a, I guess, a personal plug, I, besides the uh the ace that i have that i hold over these guys i would say that the story that i tell i there's a place in nova scotia uh cabot cabot cliffs one of the best courses in the world in canada i think every time i tell that story the course gets better and better but i mean with good reason but as far as big fish getting bigger i, I don't know. i've heard of cabot cliffs why don't you give me your take on it well i mean it's essentially right on the Cool. You're rolling your eyes already? Uh, yeah, so Inverness, Nova Scotia, right on the coast. Um, they essentially they built a Cabot Lynx golf course, and it was so good. It got so much uh, accolades that they built another one, Cabot Cliffs. And, I mean, these, these courses are just – any time that you can hit a ball over, uh, over a cliff, essentially, over the ocean to a green – on like three of the 18 holes like you're just playing all of it along the coast it's just the whole time you think you're in a in a movie it's just it's amazing it's and but that's cinematic and scenic yeah exactly and i mean it's not just that course obviously that course is plays a big role but anytime you can play a, a course on the coast it's just crazy to to be able to golf along the ocean and so there's obviously a ton of those in oregon and california and stuff like that so if people want to find your guys' podcast or they want to learn more about what you're doing, where can they find you? Sure. So uh, Drive the Green Golf Podcast is on, obviously, iTunes, Google Play, uh, social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, those types of things. Uh, but, yeah, like I say, we've had a lot of good guests on, and we're, we're happy to be our first guest on another show. Uh, so thanks to you for doing that for us. And Cheers. I hope people that uh, love the great game will listen up. <laughs> thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. Appreciate it. Rebels, thanks for listening today. I'm going to include those links in the show notes so you can find Drive the Green online, just one-stop shop for all the clicks you need. If you have any questions or comments about this episode, be sure to join us on our brand new Facebook group page, simply found at the Rebellion Brewing Podcast. New episodes and new beers are coming out all the time, so be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and on Tapped to keep your finger on the pulse of Saskatchewan craft beer. Thank you for joining the Rebellion.